Hello, welcome. My name is Father Michael Joseph of St. Therese, and I am a Discalce Carmelite Friar filming these Novena Talks from our Monasterian Shrine at Holy Hill in Wisconsin, right above Milwaukee, about 45 minutes north. Mother Celine of the Loretto Carmel in Pennsylvania asked me if I would do this new type of Novena for St. Therese. We're doing these little videos for nine days, one video each to help prepare, you know, so you're going to have to endure these from me the next nine days. But the hope is that what I can share will help you in, in some small way, maybe in your own path towards union with God, that that's what it's all about. And of course, since this is a novena to St. Therese, that, that she will be our guide through it all and kind of give us the lens through which to see this path. And first, though, I thought it'd be good to begin with a prayer and maybe just like a bit of silence to quiet our hearts, you know, to really prepare ourselves. So hopefully it's not too awkward. We'll just have a little bit of silence now. Now we'll pray a prayer to Our Lady to prepare us as well, as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as we begin, you know, just to start out with a brief personal testimony, um, kind of, yeah, how I developed a relationship with St. Therese after I'd come to know Jesus in my life and had a big conversion around the age of 18, I started going to this Catholic young adult group and of course didn't know anyone. And my first friend there was a young woman who gave me the autobiography of St. Therese, the story of a soul the ICS edition. I'll show it next time I'll remember to bring it for my uh, 20th birthday. And at first I got this gift and I thought, oh, okay, great. Cause I thought I was too cool for Therese, you know, from the little I knew about her, she seemed kind of flowery and sort of syrupy. But as I read her book, even though, yes, like we have such different backgrounds, couldn't be more different in some way. I found someone who had the same desires and aspirations for holiness and love of God that I had and was just a genuinely cool and loving person who was almost infinitely better than me, but still reading her stirred up many desires for holiness and really confidence that I too could become a saint, that she helped me see that, yeah, it's not too far away and, and it really gave me the courage too to look more deeply into the priesthood. And after I was eventually ordained a priest some years later, almost 10 years later, in 2011 for the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C., it was Therese again who helped lead me to that second part of my vocational journey to actually become a Discalced Carmelite friar in her Carmelite family. And this is the reason I'm here with you today. So if you're bored by these talks or kind of frustrated by the way of my presentation in this novena, you have one person to blame, and that's St. Therese. And maybe Mother Celine as well. Um, but uh, just to say, you know, one, one very important thing I learned from St. Therese, and this is kind of the theme, you know, there's so much you could say about Therese, but this is the theme I want to focus on for these talks at least, um, is that there's no better example of how to follow Jesus and become a saint than the Virgin Mary. Coming to know Our Lady and dedicating ourselves to her helps us so much on the path to holiness. And that's what Therese, one of the big lessons Therese taught me, because she was so devoted to Mary and consecrated herself so deeply to her. And Therese really saw Mary's importance in that union with God and how we can live that out. You know, St. Therese is such a great teacher in this regard because she had one of the most close bonds with the Virgin Mary that I think is imaginable, is possible. So much so that she began to really be like Mary. As one author put it, Therese is a miniature copy of the Virgin Mary. That her life became an icon or an image of what Mary was like on this earth. That you can get a glimpse of that through the life of Therese. 
and that this wasn't some automatic thing, right? From a very young age, Therese drew close to our Blessed Mother. From her childhood with her sisters and her family, who promoted it so much, Mary and Devotion, to when she was only six years old, she made her first confession. And it's interesting, she writes in her autobiography, this is a quote, I remember the first exhortation directed to me. Father encouraged me to be devout to the Blessed Virgin, and I promised myself to redouble my tenderness for her. So she already had this great resolution at age six, I need to redouble my tenderness towards Our Lady. And then at age 11, you know, it was later back then, Therese made her first communion. And she was actually chosen from all her classmates to recite in the name of the whole group, the prayer of consecration to Mary as part of that big day. And really a, a preview of Mary choosing Therese for her own. As a student in the day school, she struggled a lot, um, but worked very hard to enter into the group, the Children of Mary, which was a group that entailed much effort and sacrifice. But she did it. She did all that she needed to do to make it into that group. And then we know she struggled praying the rosary. It's one of the classic images in her life of her struggle with prayer. But she still did it every day in spite of all the distractions out of love for Our Lady. So Therese's devotion to Mary was authentic and strong. It was the very air she breathed from her youngest years. And she constantly made choices, you know, in that direction towards Our Lady. And Therese eventually saw her vocation as a Carmelite to really as being brought into Mary's most intimate family. Since Carmel is considered Our Lady's order, Mary became Therese's true model and her support in her effort to be united to Jesus in the consecrated life. Most of all, though, she just totally confided in Mary. You know, she came to Our Lady with all of her joys her, and her struggles, her sufferings. Therese trusted everything to Mary. And in her painful sickness that would lead to her early death, Mary was Therese's support and sure companion. No, Therese wasn't necessarily drawn to many formulas or wrote prayers of devotion to Mary, but she saw Our Lady as someone realistic to draw near to and to imitate. In one of her last conversations, um, St. Therese said this, and it's a, it's a quote from her. For a sermon on the Virgin to please me and do me any good, I must see her real life, not her imagined life. I am sure that her real life was very simple. Preachers should present her as imitable, bringing out her virtues, saying that she lived by faith just like ourselves, and then giving proofs of this from the gospel. So Therese knew what the church really needed in terms of Marian devotion and what we need today to know and love Our Lady. And so in order to fulfill her desire to show Mary just as she truly is, just a few months before she died, Therese wrote her last poem on the subject of Our Lady. It's her longest poem as well, and it's called, Why I Love You, O Mary. And later she would say about this poem, In my poem, I have said everything I would preach about her. So we have the full doctrine of Therese in this poem, on Our Lady, and so because of this, I decided to use kind of different verses from the poem as a theme for each one of the nine talks for each day of this novena. Because I believe by looking at Mary's life and virtues through the lens of Therese, we can really find our own path of coming to Jesus through Mary, and especially of trusting in Our Lady, that she will help us obtain these virtues. So I will try to offer some practical examples, how we can put sort of each virtue or each theme into practice. And I'll also try to be brief. <laughs> I know it's hard watching videos for a long time. So I'll try to be brief and I look forward to being with you over these next days. Um, thank you for your patience already with me for sticking all the way through. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. But maybe we'll just close out um, with a prayer as well. So as we pray, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. Therese, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.